The Black peoples, one of the world's largest ethnic groups, have an abundant history that even finds traces in sacred texts. Surprisingly, the Bible evokes the origins of African peoples, including their melanin, their king, and their queen. This video will give you fascinating information about the biblical ancestors of the Black and African peoples. We encourage you to leave your comments and subscribe to our channel, Black Chronicles, all the current peoples, are descendants of the three sons of Noah, Sham, Sem, and Japheth. This genealogy also applies to the black people and other ethnic groups to the dark skin whose origin goes back to Sham, one of Noah's sons. Sham is the brother of Sem and Japheth, who respectively represent the Semitic, Arab, Jewish, and Syrian peoples. Originally, the term Amit designated the descendants of Canaan, one of Noah's sons, according to the Bible. According to the book of Genesis, after the flood, Noah and his three sons were charged with perpetuating the line of Adam with only eight people, Noah, his wife, and their three daughters, the last three being their beautiful daughters. Humanity was starting to reset. Sham, son of Noah, is recognized as the ancestor of African and black peoples in the Bible. His name is constantly associated with Africa, and the Book of the Psalms designates it as the ancestor of ancient Egyptians. It is interesting to note that in antiquity, the rabbinic traditions of the Jewish people and other ancient traditions systematically identified Sham as the ancestor of African peoples. It is notable that the name of Sham itself means burned in ashes in Hebrew, in Aramaic, and in other ancient languages in reference to the skin color of its descendants. Between verses 6 and 14 of chapter 10 of the Genesis book, we can get more information about the line of Sham, also known as the two friendly peoples. This passage describes the descendants of Sham, including Cush, who is the father of several African peoples, and Mitzrayim, who is the father of the ancient Egyptians. It is essential to note that the Arabs, the Jews, the Syrians, and other peoples, also refer to Egypt. Other sons of Sham are also mentioned, including Put and Canaan, the latter being the father of the Canaanites and not the Africans. It is essential to understand that Canaan represents a distinct region on the ethnic level. The sons of Cush include Saba, Avila, Sapta, Rama, Saptecha, and Nimrod. At the beginning of his reign, Nimrod reigned over several cities, including Babel, which was part of his kingdom. Nimrod is considered as the ancestor of the indigenous peoples of ancient Babylon that the Sumerians left for Syria, where they founded two or three cities. Mizraim, on the other hand, is the ancestor of the Ludim, the Ananim, the Lehabim, the Navtuhim, the Patrusim, and the Kasluhim. One of these descendants gave birth to many nations, including the Ethiopian people, Indeed, all the Ethiopians are the descendants of Cush, formerly known as the Kingdom of Cush. These are the main nations and peoples of Cush, son of Sham, and this is not limited to Cush, to Nubia, to the Kingdom of Cush, to the Kingdom of Nubia, and to the ancient Sumerians. Nimrod, the son of the rebels of Cush, is considered the ancestor of the Sumerian people. In addition, the peoples of southern India, including those originally from the region, are supposed to be of Cushite origin just like many other Africans, including the Malians, the Eritreans, the Kenyans, the Congolese, the Bantus, and other Central African peoples. The term Kuch is often associated with Ethiopia, Sudan, and Africa in the Bible, its literal meaning being Ethiopian or black. Kuch was also the father of Kano Emitran, or Mizrahi. Mizrahi is considered as the ancestor of ancient Egyptians and many peoples of North Africa, including the Berbers and the Tarissians. It is fascinating to note that all Semitic peoples, such as the Arabs, the Aramaeans, and the Israelites, refer to Egypt under the name of Mizrahi. This designation is used in several ancient languages, such as Aramaic, Arabic, and Hebrew. In the book of the Psalms, chapter 78, verse 51, it is mentioned that God struck all the firstborns in Egypt the premises of virility at the time of Cham. In addition to Mizrahi, Cham also had a son named Put. 
An interesting curiosity is that the name Put derives from the word that means point of reference and refers to tribal hunters in Africa. Put is considered the father of the black Libyans, the natives of Libya, as well as several other African peoples. In those who concern the famous curse of Sham and the curse of Canaan described in the book of Genesis chapter 9, the text says that after Noah got drunk, his son Sham did not help him, but on the contrary, he told his other brothers that their father was naked and drunk perhaps to make fun of him. There are several possible interpretations of this text, but they are not the subject of this video. Noe then pronounced a curse on Canaan. It may seem excessive on Noe's part, but at that time, respect for parents was practically sacred. Although Noe is clearly showing inappropriate behavior by becoming drunk in this way, which was due to the accidental discovery of wine during the grape culture, God did not punish her. It is essential to emphasize that Cham and his three other sons, Kush, Mizrahi, and Put, are the ancestors of African peoples. The black peoples were not cursed, but the curse was pronounced on Canaan, the father of the Canaanites who lived in the Middle East. It is crucial to note that the interpretation of the biblical text, as if the African peoples had been cursed, is a serious mistake and a bad interpretation. The curse concerns Canaan, the ancestor of the Canaanites. Cham lived a very long life because he was born before the flood. He survived for many generations, maybe up to the fifth or sixth generation of his family and his descendants. Cham's tomb is not known for sure, but according to some studied theories, it could be in Ethiopia, in Nubia, or even in Mesopotamia, in the Sumerian land. However, many people agree to say that Cham's tomb is in Africa more precisely in Sudan or Ethiopia. Some even suggest that they could be buried in Egypt, which is particularly intriguing and interesting because Egypt is a country full of mysteries and tomb discoveries dating back to three or 4,000 years are constantly being done. The Jubilee Book provides us with more information on the age of Sham, but also on the events that applied to Noah's family and the three lineages. The Sham line, Mim, the Sem line and the Japi line, this ancient Jewish manuscript that was believed to be true at the time of Christ, which even reports earlier that Sham completely disapproves the decision of his youngest son, Canaan, to stay in the land of Sem, which is now known under the name of Israel. He did not agree with the attitude of his son Canaan to take his land for himself. In the Jubilee book, it is reported that Kaush and Mizrahi, the brothers of Canaan, and their father disavowed Canaan's decision to live in the land of Sem, which is the region that corresponds today to Israel as Cham. They also show their disapproval of Canaan's attitude. They go to Canaan and order him to leave this land because they believe that African lands are reserved for the descendants of Cham. However, Canaan disobeyed, continuing to live in this region, thus ignoring the will of his father and his brothers, Mizrahi and Cush. The Jubilee Book reports that Cham was the founder of the first city and the first province after the Deluge. He named the city in honor of his beloved wife, Niltamo. Thank you to all those who have watched our video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, share it to let other people watch it, and subscribe to our channel. May God bless Black you. Black Chronicles is your go-to destination for in-depth explorations of Black history, journals, breaking news, and insightful revelations. Our channel delves into the rich tapestry of black heritage, highlighting untold stories, significant events, and influential figures that have shaped history. From ancient civilizations to modern day movements, we uncover the hidden gems and shed light on overlooked narratives. Join us on a journey of discovery and empowerment as we celebrate the resilience, creativity, and contributions of the black community worldwide. Subscribe now for engaging content that educates, inspires, and fosters a deeper understanding of black culture and identity.